Hey. It's this game, so we're gonna fly the Spitfire, as it clearly says in the title. I'm using 20 minutes of fuel, and I changed my gun convergence down to 200 meters. I used to use 30 minutes at the least, but it's been a while since I've fought a match that lasted over 30 minutes. I've been very aggressive lately, is basically what I'm saying. And because uh, I changed my gun convergence, and I don't know what 200 meters is in miles, uh, we're gonna be using kilometers now. Yay, kilometers! Now all I have to do is change my speed from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, and I'll be all metric. But I like I like miles per hour, so so we are we're we're flying the Spitfire, and I hate this plane, or at least I used to. Basically, I <laughs> uh, basically I like the Spitfire now. Um, I've been flying the uh, I've been trying to fly the P fifty one Mustang a lot lately to get my non-premium version of the Mustang fully upgraded so I don't have to use the premium one anymore and it's been going absolutely horribly I've I've spent almost every match fighting against the British which is pretty much all of the Mark 22 and Mark 24 versions of the Spitfire which are as fast as the Mustang at least uh, they're actually quite a lot faster than at low altitude and they have a much better climb rate and obviously being Spitfires they outturn you which means they've effectively taken all of your advantages away. Also, the Mustang 1943 aircraft. Um, arguably, the D could be considered an early 1944 plane, but 1944 at the latest. The same as the 109G10. The Spitfire Mark 22 is, I believe, in 1946 is when it took its first flight and it entered full production by the end of it and entered squadron service in 1947. So that's 44 to 47. That's three years. The MiG-17 entered service in, I believe, in uh, 54. That's only, that's three years before the F-8 Crusader entered service. So, putting Mustangs against Spitfire Mark 22s is the same as putting MiG-17s against the F-8 Crusader. Which, interestingly enough, is actually what happened in the Vietnam War. And do you know what happened? <laughs> The F-8 SEAL clubbed the MiG-17s to just ridiculously easily. Although there were a few MiG-17 pilots that actually did put up a pretty big fight and managed to get away, they never managed to shoot down an F-8, but they did a pretty good job of not getting themselves shot down. Except then there were all the other pilots that did get shot down, but you know, not counting them. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a little ridiculous where the Mark 22 and 24 are at the moment. In fact, it's pretty ridiculous where most of the Spitfires are right now. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. Because I'm getting in on the fun. And it's, I don't know what they've done to the Spitfire, but it dives a lot better than it used to. It never it never really dove that poorly. But somebody pointed out to Gaijin that the Spitfire actually has one of the highest terminal mocks of any aircraft, meaning it has one of the highest dive speeds of any of the propeller aircraft of World War II. Somebody pointed that out to Gaijin, they did some research, and then they went, oh shit, it actually does have one of the highest dive speeds, so now the Spitfire can dive with pretty much any plane in the game. It takes a while for it to get there. It doesn't accelerate in the dive very well due to the massively draggy fuselage, but it does mean that Spitfires can and will outdive most planes. And being able to outdive most planes, being able, well this version can't, but the later versions can outclimb most aircraft. So it can, basically, let's compare the Spitfire Mark 22 to the Bearcat. Um, they actually turn very similarly. The Spitfire Mark 22 doesn't turn anywhere near as well as the normal Spitfires. And the Bearcat turns much better than most American planes, which brings them very close maneuverability-wise. Um, the Spitfire actually has a higher dive limit, so the Spitfire will outdive the Bearcat. The Bearcat has slightly better for zoom abilities, though, so... They're about, I'd say they're about equal in a zoom fight. The Bearcat has a little bit worse climb rate, but it has a bit better energy retention. So again, they're about equal in an energy fight. They're a little bit different. The Spitfire bleeds speed faster, but the Spitfire also builds energy faster. While the Bearcat holds its energy in a dive better, again, the Spitfire builds the energy in the first place better. And the Bearcat will out-accelerate the Spitfire on a dive, but the Spitfire will win in the long run. In a straight line, it's the exact opposite. I believe the Spitfire is a little slower top speed. Basically what I'm saying is a Bearcat and the Mark 22 Spitfires are very similar aircraft. And the Bearcat has a battle rank of 5.7 and 6.3.
um, both of the late war versions of the Spitfire, both of the 1946 at the very earliest Spitfires, not their cleanly post-war planes, 5.3. Yeah, that, it, it makes sense. It, of course, a plane that is directly comparable to the F-8F is in the same battle rank as the 109G6. It makes sense. Perfect sense. I mean, it's not like the G6 is the worst 109 of all the 109s, basically. Basically, it's it's one, that new Spitfire is one more reason why late war Germany sucks. But that's okay. We're not fighting Germany. We're fighting the Japanese. And the fun thing about fighting the Japanese are their planes are just just ridiculous. So I'm gonna I'm gonna energy fight this guy. Spitfires are really bad energy fighters. At least the mid-war ones, like the earlier Mark IX that I'm flying. Well, the Zero is even worse. The Zero is the single worst energy fighter in the game. And, I mean, it's already worked. I mean, I already have him. He's going to die now. The only question is, how how long is it going to take me to finish him off? Knowing how bad a shot I am, you'd be forgiven for thinking a long time. But I'm sure that was enough damage. Yep, there we go. That's one down. Oh, the Spitfires have, they have gotten pretty ridiculous. they are I would not expect them to stay like this for long. They're really going to get up tiered. Not necessarily this one. The Mark IX I'm flying right now isn't really that dangerous. It's not that fast. Its energy retention is terrible and its climb rate's not that good. It is, but it's not, it's not that much. The 109s will outclimb it. But the Spitfire I'm flying right now, the highest tier Spitfire I've unlocked so far, isn't the, isn't the dangerous scary one. And I'm still able to do extremely well rather easily. So let's see how well we do against bombers. His Spanos are pretty devastating weapons. And I'm purposefully coming in from about a 45 degree angle off his tail. I'm going to try and shoot for his fuselage and the wing root on this side of his plane. And that's going to get his engine and possibly his pilot. Yep. <laughs> so if you attack bombers in the back corner of their cockpit like I just did, B-17s, any of the Wellingtons, it doesn't matter what bomber, your chance of getting a pilot kill is pretty high. Especially with the Hispanos, but any cannon will do it, and most machine guns will even do it. So that's two. I just killed a bomber and I have most of my ammo left. That's definitely not something you see most people doing. But seriously, just shoot for the corner of the fuselage and get him in the cockpit, and more often than not, he will get a pilot kill. So the Kai-84 is the only one of those that's a threat. I mean, the Zero is dangerous if I let him catch up to me. If I let him get on an equal energy level, then the Zero is just going to slaughter me, but um, Zero isn't on an equal energy level. But I still have to keep an eye on him. Uh, but I have enough speed. I have enough speed that if I attack this Kai-84, then I extend past him. Didn't hit him, though. That sucks for me, but the Zero's also turning. So if the Zero's gonna ignore me, then fine, I'll kill the Kai-84. For the Zero, let's kill the Zero. The Kai-84 is dangerous if he gets the energy advantage on us, but he doesn't. So as long as the Kai-84 doesn't start climbing, he's actually not that much of a threat since both of me and this other Spitfire will outturn him so badly. Uh, I'd usually let the Zero just burn down and ignore him, but I need to... <laughs> leave my Spitfire alone. Come on, knock it off. That's right, take your time. Oh, so that Kai-84 is... Alright, there we go. But yeah, this Kai-84 up here is actually somewhat dangerous to me. I'm gonna just not let him get on my tail and hope that he doesn't energy fight me terribly well. And it looks like he's ignoring me. Which is nice. So we're just gonna cool our engine off a little. Rather not blow it up right now. If this Kai-84 that's diving on this Corsair, that other Kai-84 directly in front of me, the one that's zoom climbing under him, he doesn't have enough energy to zoom fight me, so I don't have to worry about him so much. It's this one off to my left that has enough energy. He might be able to zoom above me enough that I won't be able to get him. And I should still probably be cooling my engine off, but I'm pretty sure these are the last two. So this is this. Let's end this. Try and get him to turn up. Doesn't really matter as long as he bleeds enough energy. Um, so at this point, they both look like they have about the same energy. It really just matters which one's easier for me to kill. 
and the one that just went down underneath me to my left is going to have to do almost a full 360 degree turn to get on my tail now. So he's not going to be a threat for a good 6 or 7 seconds at least, so I have time. Come on. Come on. And pretty sure that was it. And the other guy just got shot down. Well, the other guy just crashed. But uh, there we go. <laughs> Spitfire. I would not recommend the earlier Spitfires. I personally don't like them. But trust me, they do get significantly better as they go along. Unlike a lot of other planes, the 109s actually, after the G2, they actually start getting worse until you get to the K4. And even the K4 is arguably worse than the G2. But... The Spitfires don't. The Spitfires are a nice, clean, smooth progression. They do get a little bit worse maneuverability, but they very rapidly pick up on speed and climb rate. So they very rapidly cover their only disadvantages, and they might lose a little maneuverability, but a Spitfire with a little bit of a loss in maneuverability still going to outturn most planes. So I would highly recommend the later Spitfires. Which is weird that I'm saying that because only about a week ago I would highly recommend just staying away from them because they all suck, but... I was wrong. All right, I admit it. They clubbed me for long enough. I finally figured out how good they are. Oh, it's a goofy little thing. So this is my latest Spitfire video. Expect more in the near future. I'm going to be grinding out the Spitfires for the time being. So I'll see you guys next time.